Yes, I really, really do like this Centorno. It really is a fine vehicle, you know. Ah, hello everybody, it's Megalithic here, and today we're going to take a look at purchasing the Chernobog missile launcher, don't you know? Okay, so let's get going then, shall we? We'll head on inside the facility. Now it is, uh, I do believe the Chernobog game is part of the uh, Doomsday DLC, don't you know? And I do believe that it is required to be stored inside the facility. Okay, Kogi, well, as you can see, don't have one currently. Will set up there, not there right now, ladies and gentlemen. Gotta be shockingly honest with you on this occasion. I have, uh, have already gone ahead and purchased it, you know. I've neglected to record that part, but it's little fair, really. We'll still get a general idea of the actual, uh, of the machine in action. You know, as you can see, it has just been delivered. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Chernobog has now been delivered to my facility, and I should well think so. I've paid good money for it. Okay, well, there we go. What do we think, ladies and gentlemen? We're straight away rather gopping, isn't it? Rather hideous looking in there, you know? Sort of, I suppose, supposed to be some kind of Soviet missile launcher. I couldn't say I'm not particularly okay. Now, like I say, the Chernobog can be found under the Warstock Cash and Carry website, okay? And there we go, going down. Not going to purchase because I already have, but as you can see, Generally retailing for a quarter of a million dollars there, uh, or should I say two and a half million dollars, uh, not a quarter of a million, and that'd be a dream now, wouldn't it? Yes, I got it on sale, uh, but generally speaking, uh, retailing for two million, uh, what, 490,000 or so, let's be honest, that's uh, two and a half million dollars. Uh, so why don't we just go ahead and jump on in and see what we get for our money then, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go and uh, upgrade it, of course, we won't be taking it to the custom auto shop, I doubt we could get it in. Okay, now, and as always, during these uh, upgrade parts of the videos, you know, we are going to be going at double speed, of course, just to uh, sort of ease things along somewhat. We don't want to be sat here all day, after all. Okay, but it'll give you a general idea of what, uh, what sort of options come available to this uh, to this Chernobog, you know. And uh, as you can see, got camo, library, all sorts of things there. And we're going to go through some of the colors. And what oh, about that? Yes, we can change the colors of the missiles. So the fact that really is rather handy. Okay, well, regrettably, ladies and gentlemen, as this is my facility and as this is a crew vehicle, so to speak, it is going to have to go into the uh, the crew colors with the three-tone or uh, the three-color livery there. Yes, I do think so. And why the hell not put it on the old, uh, put it on the old uh, missile launchers and the wheels there too? It would seem. Okay, green and red, kind of Christmassy, isn't it? I don't know if I like that. I like, like the threatening red from the missiles, you know, but I think that uh, green and red's a little too Christmassy, a little too jolly for something that's supposed to be so destructive, don't you know? Green and green, not taken with that either, really. Green and blue, maybe. I am not entirely certain. Okay, well, I'm not entirely sure. Perhaps just a black, a dark color. I think perhaps that's what we're going to have to go with. Right, okay, they're not like, no, don't like that whatsoever. Right, spending a long time on this here. What, what, what the bloody hell's that? Right, I've been kicked from the session. Okay, that really is rather irritating. Okay, well, we'll just load back on into another session, don't you know, ladies and gentlemen? I'm afraid that sort of thing does happen from time to time. Not all that often, to be frank with you, but there we go. Okay, someone obviously took a disliking to me, didn't they? I can't imagine why I hadn't been upsetting anybody, you know? I should think they wanted the lobby to themselves, perhaps. Okay, Koki, well, there we go. We're going to hop back on inside now and just go and uh, complete those modifications. Like I said, I've done the... Uh, the vast majority of it, so I'm just gonna finish off that library, I do believe, and I'm not entirely certain what I'm gonna go with, something like that, maybe? Yes, I do think so, yes, why not? Okay, well, let's take her out and uh, see what she can do then. Okay, we're not gonna mess around, we're gonna get straight to it here, head straight down to the bloody hell, right, okie Koki. well, I do suppose that's a truck for you, not particularly uh, used to driving these vehicles, you know, not particularly okay with the larger trucks, and so I'm gonna be all over the road as you See, so I got to handle it. I'm bloody hell right. Okay, I did not expect that. That car just starting well blew up. Did you see that? My God. Right, okay. Well, I did not expect that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That seems to be a one trait of the Chernobog. It pretty much acts as a battering ram, you know. And I've got a $9,000 bounty set on me for it. Okay, well, I suppose it is a... Uh, people do take a dim view of it when you go destroying the innocent pedestrian or innocent motorist on the road, I should say. Okay, cokey, right, okay, right, so heading on down, like I say, so there we go, that's an interesting feature of this particular vehicle, apparently it acts as some kind of explosive battering ram, then, you know, you hit a vehicle and it's just going to blow up, I certainly did not expect that. Okay, well, here we go, we're going to okay, take it on down now and see what's going on now, uh, the whole point of this vehicle, of course, ladies and gentlemen, is it is a missile launcher, those, uh, those great big tubes that you can see on the back there uh, are supposed to provide some sort of ground-to-air, uh, 
anti-deterrent for griefers, I suppose, really. But uh, they don't really. Uh, well, are they effective? Let's find out, shall we? Rumor. Uh, the rumors are that they're not. The rumors is this is a, a complete waste of time, you know. But we'll go and find out. Okie dokie. Now, I do believe uh, one of the unfortunate things about this vehicle is if you do wish to access those missiles, you can't simply do it from the driver's seat. Uh, right. Okay, I've got back into the driver's seat there, haven't I? No. Apparently, one has just have to go into the. Uh, one has to go into the rear of the vehicle uh, to... Oh, bloody hell! Right, okay, right, what was that? Sodding motorist wasn't looking where the hell I was going, was it? Bloody wretched scoundrel. Right, okay, there we go. I think I'm... Am I heading into the back now? Have I got into the back or have I got into the front again? There we go, got into the back, you know. There we go. So one has to get into a separate door, you know. It's rather tricky, or it can be if the first time trying to figure it out there. And then you should be able to have access to the missile... Uh, battery there as you can see now you jump on out and it just sort of reset itself quite nicely and as you can see i've had to put some legs down there i know you saw but uh behind the front wheels there one does have to put down a set of legs to stabilize the uh the vehicle in order to fire the missiles okie dokie well there we go ladies and we've got two stars after us if we can get a third star then maybe we can get some police in there or some helicopters i should say and there we go Right, okay, like I say, another another example of that battering ram function there. It does seem to just blow these cars to hell when it charges into them. Okay, okay, well, like I said, now, whoops, it is, there we go, got another one. Uh, like I said, we've got three stars after us now, so a little bit of luck, the police will start sending helicopters, you know, and we can, uh, we can actually test out the, uh, the effectiveness or otherwise of the, uh, of the Chernobog. Okay, then, so we're going to take it on down to the Sandy Shores airstrip, that seems like the appropriate place to conduct this test, don't you know? Uh, we'll take it on down there, we'll try and put the legs down and try and clip this helicopter. Boom, there we go, haha, <laughs> jolly good. I like I say, we're going to take it on down now and uh, just see if we can just test the effectiveness of this vehicle. Now, unfortunately, like I say, I'm going to have to hop on out and uh, get into that rear door there and hopefully I'll be able to do it without getting killed. Right, okay, not a good start. Right, okay, what's going on? Jumped out, have I? Try and get inside, round the other side. Like I say, it can be rather tricky. I believe you have to hold down the triangle key to, uh, to get in. Okay, finally, and now and here we go, something in the air, there we go, right, and I need to uh, hold L2 apparently to a manually target, and there we go, jolly good, got him out, firing and boom. Okay, well, not much different really to a standard miss. Okay, we can lock on things on the ground, how about that, not just simply uh, based on the air, you know, ladies and gentlemen. There we go, well, let's try and clear a few of these coppers away, they really are quite irritating, you know. Okay, okay, right. Seems to be a what a cool down timer there. Yes, yeah, right. Okay, there seems to be a there seems to be some sort of cool down timer there. Not entirely certain what, but we'll find out as we go through. Okay, seem to be picking these coppers off with not much difficulty though, do I? Right. Okay, then. Right. Can't get that one directly in front of me. Probably not a good idea to blow him up anyway, him, given his proximity to my vehicle. Okay, Koki, so there we go, right, can I lock on him? Right, okay, so yeah, there does seem to be a sort of die. There we go, helicopter, let's see if we can get him. Jolly good. Okay, yes, yeah, so there is a limit to the, uh, to the sort of maneuvering capabilities of this turret here. It can only go so far up and so far down, as you can see those, uh, policemen in front of me there. Uh, I simply can't target. They are simply too close and too low to the ground, and, uh, so yes, there is a sort of threshold limit to, and there we go, another helicopter will take him out, and jolly good, firing and boom. Okay, they're not too bad though, they certainly don't ever miss, or it certainly doesn't seem they miss, does it? Uh, and they can, like I said, they can hit things on the ground, it's jolly good fun really, and another helicopter, okay, here we go then, right here we go, jolly good, and boom, there we go, right, so this does seem to be uh, quite a match for the police, doesn't it? There doesn't seem to be really much they can do about it, goodness knows how long I'd have to sit here taking a small arms fire before this machine blew up, but I'm simply not prepared to wait that long. Okay, there we go. We'll blow a few more of people up as we go in there. Right, jolly good. Okie dokie. Right, uh, what's going on here? Taking some, obviously taking some bullets through the glass there. Okie dokie. Right, never mind. So there we go. That's an interesting thing. Apparently, a uh, small arms fire can get through that glass there, so you do want to be careful. Uh, but when it comes to dealing with the police, obviously, as I say, this thing really is uh, absolutely fantastic. They don't seem to be able to do much about it, to be quite frank with you. Uh, the gentlemen who get quite close, you can't hit, but there we go. So anyway, that's the coppers, ladies and gentlemen. What about uh, other players? We're now going to uh, test the old, uh, test it on a Hydra or a uh, Pressure Mark II, I believe. And as you can see on the mini-map there in the bottom left-hand corner, he really was quite a way away from us. So yes, in terms of dealing with the Pressure Mark II, this thing's not too bad. As you can see, I took him down quite easily. Okay, now he's going to hop into a Hydra, I do believe. And uh, we're going to give the Hydra a test to see how far away they are. Uh, See how far we can get him with the Hydra. Right, okay, we're locking onto him there, but we don't want to take him out just yet. You can see him moving up in the sky there. Like I say, we do want to give him ample chance. There'd be no point in killing him. Now we're going to let him uh, get some distance from us and then come in on an attack run and see if he can get us or see if we can get him. 
So yeah, it's like I say, the initial test there, if you saw it, then bottom left hand corner of the map, uh, the uh, pressure was some distance away, certainly out of lock on range for him, but uh, the Cheddar Bog was perfectly capable of locking onto the Oppressor Mark II. So yes, this may well be a, a vehicle that can uh, counter the Oppressor Mark II if one can be bothered to pull it out. Okay, Kirk here, I was still waiting for him to come back around. Now he's going to have to go away, like I say, uh, get some distance, and then uh, and then he's going to have to come in on a return pass, don't you know? Okay, right, and there we go, I've got a lock on already. Okay, now he really is uh, quite a distance away, as you can see, firing missiles, and... Right, that was a couple of them, but didn't seem to get him. Right, we'll fire a few more. Okay, it's kind of got barrage function there. You can fire quite a few. But no, we didn't seem to get him, did they? Locked onto him, but they haven't hit him. Not yet. He could have, uh, if he had explosive cannons and he was a good pilot, he... Right, okay. But, well, he seemed to go down there. I don't think I got him. I'm entirely certain what happened there. So, yes, it looks like the Hydra, uh, whilst it can, uh, whilst uh, the Chernobyl has a greater lock on range than the Hydra, the Hydra moves so darn fast, don't you know, ladies and gentlemen, that, uh, that you can probably, a skilled pilot could probably get in with the uh, explosive cannons there and take the Chernobog out uh, before its homing missiles actually uh, manage to connect with the machine, with the aerial, uh, with the airborne vehicle there. Okay, well, I'm going to give it a go. I'm certainly no proficient pilot whatsoever, but we'll give it a little go, you know, and see if I, uh, see if we can just, uh, can't just get the explosive cannons to take out the Chernobog. Hello, Mr. Chernobog. Now, I'm just going to go a short distance away, of course, and when I, when I come, bloody hell! Right, okay, there was absolutely no need for that. He knew full well what I was going to do, and he just went and shot me for a giggle, didn't he? The wretched raccoon. You see, that's why we call him a garbage panda, you know, ladies and gentlemen. He really is absolutely atrocious when it comes to uh, manners and things like that. He has no qualms whatsoever in shooting a missile up your jacksie, and I don't care for that kind of thing. Right, okay, cookie. Yes, hop on out, Mr. Raccoon. You've had enough fun in that, I should think. Right, okay, he's not listening to me. Right, okay, never mind, I'll just try everywhere I want to then. There we go, there you see the, uh, an example of the barrage function there. Okie cokey, there we go. So, like I say, what do we think of the uh, Chernobog? Well, it does seem to be uh, capable of dealing with oppressors, doesn't seem to be particularly capable of dealing with hydras, really, ladies and gentlemen. That will sort of be the, uh, the conclusion from this rather in ineffective test, to be quite frank with you. Okay, now we've got the coppers after us, don't you know? So we're gonna have to go ahead and call Lester now, aren't we? We don't want to be dealing with these uh, with these uh, pigs, to be quite frank with you. And there we go, problem solved. Okay, and there we go. That's another Hydra. Okey cokey. Well, I think Mr. Raccoon's gonna hop on out now. I'm only gonna give that Hydra thing one more test. You know, wasn't uh, wasn't particularly effective the last time. Okay, yeah, so here we go. Like I say, uh, the oppressor went down very, very easily. The oppressor mark two, I should say, went down very, very easily against this thing, even from a distance away where it couldn't possibly lock on. The, uh, the Chernobog can lock onto it there and can take it down. Uh, when it comes to the uh, the Hydra, it seems to be a little bit more tricky. The Hydra did seem able to get through there, and so we're going to give the Hydra one more go. Okay, go again. Like I say, hopping out. I've put the legs down there, and I've just got to jump into the front. What's going on? I'm going around the side again. I that's no good. Right, okey cokey, jolly good. Right, here we go. Pressing triangle, holding it down. Bloody hell. Like I say, it really is a nuisance to get into this thing sometimes. Okey cokey, there we go. There. Right, uh, what the hell? Oh, bloody hell, I got straight out again. Right, okay, well, there's a door on both sides. At least I've learned that. Okay, jolly good. Right, so there we go. You can't access it from either side, apparently. I wasn't aware of that until just this very moment. Right, okay, so there we go. Mr. Raccoon is way off in the distance there, as we can see. And with a bit of luck, he'll be turning that hide around and coming back in now for an attack run. And we'll see if we can't just get him, ladies and gentlemen. Okey, cokey. Right, and what's the locking on the ground there? That right, there we go. Right, got an aerial lock firing a sort of a barrage there, I suppose, or whatever. And there we go. Keep firing, keep firing. Right, I think it's quite clear that if he was firing those cannons with any, uh, he's not firing at all, but if he was firing, and if they, he was an accurate uh, pilot, then yes, I think there's no question. The Hydra probably could get through and uh, take out the Chernobog before the Chernobog can take down the Hydra. Okie koki, well that's two and a half million dollars for a fat lot of nothing, really, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Probably can't deal with the oppressor, the oppressor's moving quick enough, you might have difficulty just like the Hydra here. Uh, but if it's, uh, you know, what the oppressor mark two is like, they generally don't, uh, they don't have to continue moving in the same way that a Hydra does, and so often they don't. And so, yes, Chernobog should be able to take down, a, uh, should be able to take down the oppressor mark two, it's got a greater range, greater lock on range, and there we go, finally got the wretched Rapscallion, don't you know? Took rather a long time, though, like I said, I think if he was firing missiles or firing uh firing explosive cannons there we'd be absolutely done for okay ladies and gentlemen so there we go what do we think of the chernobog is it worth the money 
No, not really, to be quite frank with you. I mean, if you want to take down an Impressor Mark II, pull out your own Impressor Mark II, why don't you? Or just uh, fire him off with an upper anatomizer and then shoot him on the ground, something like that. Uh, the the homing missile would be probably just as effective as the Chernobog against something like the Hydra there. Okie dokie. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.